What I like to call my Tuscan fish stew, or the name, the official name for Tuscan fish stew, is cachuco. So I've got my coarsely chopped vegetables for my fish stock. I know fish stock is one of those things that might seem a little scary to people. They're like, stock? Stock could not be more cinchy. It's just a bunch of veg, some bones. In this case, we're using fish bones. And uh, oh, you know what? While I'm over here and I did all my veg prep, let's go ahead and get my pan heating up for my tomato fish stew also. So look at me, I'm multitasking all over the place. So my veg are sweating for my fish stock. Let's get back to fish stock. My fish bones, this is some cod bones. I'm using cod in my dish today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use these same bones. Can I just simmer these guys? I BTB, RTS, bring to boil, reduce to simmer, and simmer for about 20 minutes. Then fish bones give up their fishy goodness and that's done. Could not be more cinchy. My fish stock is working, working away. I've been sweating some, again, some onions and celery and some garlic. I added some fish bones to that and a whole bunch of thyme and bay leaves and my fennel tops. So we just stick all that there. I'm adding my shrimp shells to this. I mean, really, I've got them. Those are like the bones of the shrimp. So we'll go ahead and toss those in there as well. So my shrimp, beautiful, ready, peeled, deveined. All right, I sliced up my garlic. Life is so easy when I do all my prep work ahead and it's just so much fun. You just whip through things then. All right, nice. So. As I said, this is a tomato fish stew, so let's go ahead and rock out our tomatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tomatoes through my favorite piece of kitchen equipment, my food mill, and then we're gonna get those into my fish stew. All right, so I passed my tomatoes through my food mill. I'm scraping off all the pulpy stuff off the bottom. I always make sure I do that because that's the big money item there. So, all right. So my vegetables seem nice and sweaty over here. This is great. My fish stock, just about done. All right, look at that. I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper to this. You know, the tomato sort of saffrony thing, I like a little spice to it too, that's great. Beautiful, so it's time for the party. Let's go ahead and add some wine to this also. This will bring a lovely, bright acidity to the whole shoot and match. Yeah, baby. All right, we'll give it a little salt there as well. You know, we always kind of make sure we season along the way. We'll help bring up beautiful, big, big flavors later on. Nice. Then so we're gonna let that reduce by half and then we're gonna go ahead and get our fish stock in there. But let's go ahead and strain the fish stock. So as I said, fish stock is really cinchy. It's really Q and E. So it's all about like just sort of bring stuff to a boil and then simmer it for about 20 to 30 minutes and then it's done. It's a piece of cake. And if you make a lot of fish stock now and you don't use it all, go ahead and toss it in the freezer for the next time you're doing this. Okay, look at my fish bones ready for the garbage can, but we used all those big flavors. All right, look at my beautiful fish stock. I'm probably not even gonna need to use all of this today. So we're gonna go ahead and get fish stock in. There we go. We'll save that in case I need a little bit more later. Now, we're gonna go ahead and add a super special, as I said, my super special flavor weapon to this. All right, so we have our standards, we have our thyme, and we have our bay. Yes, we always add these in sort of brazy, stewy, long cooking things. Yes, there we go. Now, we have the super cool thing, saffron. Saffron is used in a lot of Mediterranean cooking and it's very expensive. It's like these, look at these little like stringy looking things. They are actually the stigma of a crocus and people go in there and pluck them out of every flower. Could you imagine if you were a saffron picker? So we're gonna add this in there. It has a very unique flavor. It's pretty strong and it has a beautiful yellowy orange color. And sometimes if you over saffron, things can kind of taste like plastic. So we wanna feel that big flavor, but we don't need to go hog wild with this. In the meantime, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my cod. So in my fish stew, I'm gonna do some cod. I have big shrimp and I'm also gonna do some clam. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these prepped in just a minute, but let's take a look-see at our cod. Okay, so I have these cut in about four ounce portions. We've got big shrimp, we've got clams. So, you know, we don't need the biggest uh, cod piece either, but you know, this is like a nice meaty white fish. You know, if you find something, if your cod at your fishmongers doesn't look super fresh that day, use something else, use bass, use snapper. You know, it's all about lovely fish stew. Okay, look at that. So we have nice yellow things going on there. I'm gonna add my tomatoes to this. Season this guy up. 
I've got my beautiful stew base here. It's all tomatoes and fennel and onions and celery and garlic, all big chunky stuff. And it's got lovely saffron in there. My cod that I got out is doing good things. I think it should take one more second before I turn it. All right, so my cod, beautiful, looks ready to turn over here. Yeah, baby. Oh, look at this. Now, I am just searing my cod on the outside here. I'm going to add this to finish cooking it later on in my fish stew. But at the moment, I'm just getting it lovely and beautifully seared on the outside. So, there we go. So, my cod is beautifully browned on the top and the bottom. I'm going to take this out. We're gonna ditch the fat here, and then I'm gonna add in my scrubbed clams. So, as I said, with my clams, I scrub the outside so we don't have any sand and grit. And I picked through them to see, to make sure that there weren't any shells that were broken, or, you know, that everyone was all clammed up, all nice and shut tight. That's always what we do with all kinds of shellfish. Okay, so these guys go right into my pot. There we go. Yeah, so now I'm gonna use some of my fish stew base and we're gonna steam the clams right in there. Sort of like a one pot deal. Once we get to this stage, it goes all right in the same pot. Yeah. Yeah, baby, some of those big veg. So I'll save this, the rest of this stew base to add into there if I need to. I'm gonna steam my clams until they open. Beautiful. My clams, look at my little clams that I scrubbed and all that are cooked and open in my stew here. I'm adding my shrimp to that to, to cook those. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my cod right on top of those so we cook those as well. Oh baby, is this good looking. So remember my cod I just seared and it's not fully cooked. There we go, carefully lay that back in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some beans, my beanie weenies, look at, cooked perfectly, seasoned perfectly. And all of those aromatic -y things I've taken out, easy removal, the bacon skin and all that. Good stuff going on here, yeah, baby. This, look at, a whole lot of stuff is winding up in this one pot, and then it goes all right on my plate from there. All these flavors are having a chance to come together. So a little bit of escarole. I washed this and used one of my other favorite pieces of kitchen equipment. It's my salad spinner. I love this thing. It's good for stuff other than salad, clearly, because there goes my escarole in there. So we're going to put the lid back on this. Hey, put a lid on it, and then it's just going to come together beautifully. All good stuff happening in there. Look at that. My cod cooked through. Let's go ahead and plate this whole shoot and match, huh? Look at, is that a fish stew in there right now? Look, I just want to take a picture of that because there's just so many beautiful flavors and colors and excellent stuff happening there. So I'm going to use this thing. I use this in the restaurant all the time, but I find these very helpful at home. It's called the sizzle platter. So, you know, you can stick it in the broiler or it's very good to just be like a parking space, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm taking my clams out of there and let's find my little shrimp underneath here. So we made a big pot of this stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead and place, oh, look at my shrimp cooked perfectly and gently, and look how gorgeous this whole shooting match is. So let's go ahead, get some of my little beanie weenies. Yeah. And my escarole, look at, we've got beans, escarole, all this fish, this is a big meal today. Beautiful. All right, so cod, some beautiful shrimp. And you can arrange this however you want, but this is a lovely presentation. It's rustic and it's hearty, fantastic. So one more little ladle of this beautiful broth here. Okay, clean up the bowl. Yeah, this is pretty sexy. All right, so one more drizzle with my big fat finishing oil, my fennel fronds and my bread and I am in business. So there we go. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby.